Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Esther and welcome back to my channel. And today I have an array of ingredients and equipment beside me because we're doing something super exciting. Today we are making Satan. Now this elusive vegan meat has many names to it, chick wheat, wheat meat, but my favorite and by far the most notable name is seitan. And I gotta tell you, I haven't actually made that much seitan. My mom is way better. She's been practicing her seitan for like ever. She got good at it like, I don't know, five years ago when we went I became vegan. So the reason why I'm really here is because I found this recipe that interests me and it's to get that pullable, shreddable texture of seitan that is kind of coveted in the seitan community, I suppose. Um, where you roll out and layer it kind of like you would with like a croissant dough or anything where you're trying to get like flaky layers in bread except for it's much thicker and denser obviously because it's supposed to be a meat substitute but it's supposed to end up shreddable like chicken and that interests me this recipe its technique interests me i read through the recipe like a couple times so i could kind of like get the gist of what we're doing and we're gonna try it out today so um, first, I have this can of chickpeas, and I'm supposed to use the whole thing, including its juice, and that's going to, I think, be like the main liquid in binding, because we have a little bit of water, but honestly, it's not that much. It's just like 35 milliliters, so that's that. I'm going to open this can of chickpeas. I love these pop lids, you know what I'm saying? The ones that have like a little like thing to pull so you don't have to use a can opener. I'm gonna pour these chickpeas into my blender. This is a Vitamix, a 10 out of 10 blending solution for all of your blending needs. Um, so I have my chickpeas in here and it says bouillon powder, but I have this better than bouillon chicken, like vegan chicken no chicken base and it's so good like there's also the McCormick McKay's McCormick I think it's McKay's McKay's chicken seasoning which is a powder and it's really good and I like it in tofu and things but I think this has like a solid chicken flavor um I'm just gonna mix about like a tablespoon into this like small amount of water I know that this needs to end up super flavorful because it's going to have like the vital wheat gluten in it later, which has like no seasoning or flavors in it. So this needs to almost be like overly salty to like get the vibe that you want in your final product of like a chicken flavor to have a flavor. I know chicken doesn't have, I've actually never had chicken before. So, um, but I've heard that it's not super flavorful. That's why people add like lots of different seasonings and stuff to it. Like unlike steak where you can just like cook it in like butter and maybe some herbs I like I don't know it's just like it's basically a bread and I think about it sometimes I think about it when I'm eating this stuff and you like put this into bread and you make a sandwich with this and you're just putting bread inside bread and then it's like breadception and it's just so much bread and it's like carbs for days but that's okay so I got chickpeas and I got the water and I got the bouillon powder in here and we're gonna go with one tablespoon of this white vinegar and I assume it's just to give it some like zing to your final product um I don't really know to be honest and we're gonna go we're gonna, we're gonna follow this recipe exactly because I want it to come out how the author intended I I'm not known <laughs> I'm not known for following recipes to a T but when it's something like this I like doing it um, as intended the first go round, and if something's weird with the final product then come up with solutions to tweak it and make it better if there's something amiss so I'm gonna do the two teaspoons of onion powder and then one teaspoon of garlic powder this actually doesn't have any salt like in this 
which is a little concerning. I mean, I know my bouillon has like a lot of salt in it, like it's to make veggie broth. But I'm gonna taste this, and honestly, if it's not salty enough, I'm going to add salt. I know I literally just said two seconds ago that I want to follow it exactly. Um, but if it's not going to taste good in the end, and that's something you can kind of gauge yourself, I think, if you have like a basis of like flavors and like additives for things, like whether it's gonna taste good as a final product. I'm just gonna make it and find out. This is the 50 grams of tofu, silken tofu. And it seems like a small amount to me, but I know that tofu, like in my culinary um, class when I made this, it did have tofu, but I think it had a significant more amount of tofu and it wasn't silken. But I know tofu does aid in like the texture of a final product of seitan. So this is what goes in our blender and I'm going to blend this all up. It's going to be super smooth and then this liquid gets transferred into this bowl with the vital leaf gluten. So I'm gonna blend this up. Later. Okay, all this does is to blend it till it's really smooth and I just blended it for maybe like 45 seconds and it looks pretty smooth. Looks like it's gone places. It smells, it smells beany, but that's because of the garbanzo beans, obviously. I'm gonna taste this mixture because you can't take well you can but you probably shouldn't taste it with when the flour's in it because raw flour can carry bacteria but honestly listen raw flour can carry e. coli in it if you don't like bake the flour beforehand but i haven't died yet this is pretty good um i i, I do think i want to add a little bit more salt a little bit more seasoning for our final product um because i want it to be flavorful and i want it to be good it's going to end up being fried chicken or kung pao chicken so it's going to coat it with more seasonings and stuff but like i don't want this to just taste like bread I'm gonna try. that's probably like fourth of a teaspoon of salt and i want to add a little bit more of this um bouillon i'm blowing this up a little more one eternity later okay so this is all blended with a little bit more salt and a little bit more bouillon okay i think this is good i think this is great i forgot my dough hook so i'm gonna go get that for a second and then we're going to mix this up and knead it all together okay so i'm gonna fit this dough hook on here and we're going to pour all of our liquid in well i put all the liquid in there and i should have put the flour first but it's fine because it'll all blend and this is um 400 300 grams of flour of vital wheat gluten so i'm gonna put all that in there great amazing beautiful i'm gonna plug this in just a mess of cords. Just a lot of things happening. I'm gonna plug it in back here. Um, let's go. Let's just put this on low speed for a minute to get this incorporated. So this is what's happening with the flour. It's uh, it's it's getting together. Okay, so per the recipe's instructions. I kneaded the gluten, our dough, for five minutes and it looks like this. It's a big gelatinous blob. It's amazing. 10 out of 10. Um, kind of fun to play with, to be honest. But I'm also going to now let it rest covered with this towel for about 10 minutes. And I thought we could talk a little about gluten flour and why it works. So in flour, everything has... Uh, amount of protein and there are different flours that have different amounts of proteins like cake flour and pastry flour have like the lowest amount of protein so there's very little gluten development and there's all-purpose flour which kind of has this in-between protein content of about 9 to 11 percent and it's kind of good for like everything it's good for breads and it's good for pastries and you can make everything with it but there's obviously pastry flour if you want to get fancy and bread flour if you want to get fancy 
Um, and this flour has the highest protein content, but it allows it to like build this kind of structure with protein that is like a meaty consistency. Like think of think of protein structure in bread as like netting, and the more you knead the bread, the tighter the netting gets. Which is why they tell you in recipes not to knead cake dough or like. And any any like pastry that's supposed to be soft and fluffy, like your like your muffins or your cupcake batter. Like if you need it too long, you kind of this like chewy consistency that's not that great. You want like a nice soft crumb and a nice like delicate finished product. So you don't want to develop that gluten structure basically at all because otherwise you do end up with that like chewy consistency. But with this, we really want to build that gluten structure. Hence why I needed it on high for like five minutes. So it can like build that webbing tighter and tighter and tighter. So it can be like a meat like product. And I think that's kind of cool that flour can do that and have that protein consistency and build upon each other as such. So something to keep in mind if you do try making seitan is that you are building a network of gluten. You're building a protein structure because meat is a protein and this is supposed to resemble meat. So you just want that tight network of dough and it's going to look chunky and gluttonous and the end product is going to be great if you give it that time, give it the care to make that gluten structure and make those connections and build those bonds. So Okay, so it is time to show you how to roll out this gluten and I'm kind of excited. I've never seen this method before but it interests me a lot. Um, like I said, we're trying to get that like pulled like shredded chicken consistency and this looks really promising because what we're doing is we're taking our big gelatinous thing and we're chopping it up into sections and rolling them out um, and layering them so they have that like layered pullability like basically built in I'm gonna chop it up into three sections just with my spatula because I don't want to like damage this table it's nice and thick and it's like See what I'm saying? Like this is this is the consistency you want out of your seitan. And so I'm supposed to chop it into three pretty much equal sections, as close as I can get, but it's fine. I'm gonna set these two aside and I'm gonna get them, get them covered. And I'm gonna show you what it told me to do. And it's to chop this up into six pieces. And then we're gonna roll out each individual piece. So one, two, three. And you want them to be as equal, like don't obsess over it, but equal as possible. Just chop them up into like pretty equal little chunks. And so we've got like six pieces. See, like look at this like beautiful like consistency, this pull to it. It's already got like a great chickeny consistency even with just the kneading. So I can only imagine that this technique is going to add a lot to it. It's so I have this between two pieces of like baking paper just like that and I'm gonna roll it as thin as I can okay so a nice like thin round ovular kind of shape is what we're going for I guess and okay that looks like a pretty thin piece looks pretty nice looks just like that um, I'm gonna set it down and I'm supposed to brush it with oil. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of this canola oil just into like a bowl I have here. And take my little brush and just brush it over. Okay, so this is all six pieces for this log. Just gonna brush that last one with oil. And then this is going to stretch over all the pieces, question mark. This is the t this is the technique. It just kind of like folds it in and tucks under that last one, so it's just like this. And then we're gonna just like roll it a bit. So we're closing up some of those seams, just rolling it into like this little baby log. If you've ever had Worthington products, it kind of looks like a little mini Worthington chicken log. We're gonna pull out a wax paper and stick our log on and we're supposed to wrap it in here tightly. So I'm just gonna 
fold it up like that, and then we wrap it in foil. So I'm just going to grab a piece of foil and stick this here and then wrap this up. And I'm going to twist the ends so it's nice and tight um, so our little log is in there and then fold them over the bottom where this seam is to keep it tight. And that is one of our little chicken logs. And I'm going to roll the rest of these and be back with you to steam them in a couple minutes. Da -da -da -dum, ba -da -dum, ba -bum. Okay, I'm here and I have my water steaming after much folding and rolling and folding and rolling, folding and rolling. I have this water at a boil with my steamer plate inside. And these are my three little chicken boys, and I'm just going to drop them in here. And they're going to steam for 90 minutes, and I'm going to flip them about 45 minutes through, like halfway through, and then they'll be done. And I stick them in the fridge to cool off overnight, and I will show you the results in the morning. Okay, so it is the moment of truth for our chicken seitan logs. I have all three of my little sons here and I'm going they they steamed for 90 minutes yesterday and I didn't do anything to them I just stuck them in the fridge and they've been in there overnight so here we are seeing the shreddability of them so I'm just gonna take one and we'll unwrap it and see how it is okay so it's very moist very moist in here not surprised it was in a steamer it smells chickeny. Oh, this paper's kind of hard to get off. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Told me to wrap it in this paper, and that's what I did. And now the paper's sticking to it. This paper is not 10 out of 10. Just keep peeling, just keep peeling. What do we do? We peel the baking paper. Two hours later. <laughs> Next time, if this is if this is just like the world's most stupendous chicken, I'm wrapping it in plastic wrap and tin foil, cause absolutely not. This is the worst. Okay, so I think I got most of the baking paper off. Side still looks a little a little sketchy, but we're gonna we're gonna see how this like shreddability goes. I should be able to just like kind of like break into it and shred it with my hands so the recipe says so here I'll just rip into this <laughs> interesting it does have kind of like this texture layer interesting interesting all the layers uh, kind of melded together oh but like look at this look at the here you can kind of still pull the layers apart of this stuff but look at this as you like tear it that's a nice consistency you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying just like a nice chickeny consistency it's got this skin too from like being pulled over but it rips really well like it shreds pretty great so this is our chicken up close and personal it has a great texture and a great consistency to it. I personally think it looks a lot like shredded chicken, but I could be wrong. Meat eaters, please correct me and be offended by the things I say. Just like a chunk like that would be a good like fried chicken piece, but you can like rip it smaller into like chicken strips or even just smaller pieces. Like that's kind of great. Like it looks, but we have to taste test it. I'm just gonna take this outer piece. <laughs> More paper? <laughs> Exciting. I'm gonna take that off. Okay, I'm gonna give it the taste test. It has a good flavor, it has a good texture, it has a good like look to it, and it has a good like hold like this is gonna hold up being able to be like breaded and fried and it's not gonna fall apart at all my 
only qualm is this baking paper, which isn't necessarily the chicken's fault. It's the baking paper's fault. It's stuck to the chicken and like in the steamer. It got all weird and wonky, but like I said, that's not the chicken's fault. Uh, overall, I give this chicken a solid B+. Plus. Maybe this does taste like actual, actual chicken. I have no idea. No basis for that, but I think it's good for, for a seitan, for a person who has tasted much seitan. This definitely deserves its B plus ranking, and I will put all of the ingredients in the recipe below with the measurements that I think should be adjusted for like salt and seasoning. And if you try it, let me know. Leave a comment down below how it went and how you liked it. I'm going to go and make this into some Kung Pao chicken. So thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up down below. Try making this recipe and hit me up in the comments with any questions or concerns or if you make this, let me know about it and let's be friends. And all my social medias are linked in the description box down below and I love you so much. Goodbye.